but I have a secret that I do to help me preserve more food for my family and save some money. When I walk in, I have my list of what I need and I try never to deviate from it. But before I even go to my list, I walk the perimeter of my store where I know they have all the different little clearance sections. We have one in the deli section, one in the vegetable section, one in the meat department, one in the dairy department, one near the freezer section where they actually keep the bakery clearance things. And then there's a small one that is in the freezer section so that I go hit all of those up first because if it's on my list, but I can find it on clearance, I'll grab the clearance version every time to save a little money. Or it may help me preserve more, or it may help me adjust my grocery list that week, and we just change up what we're gonna have because I found something on sale. So when I went to go get groceries last, I found some really great deals of things that I knew that I could dehydrate and store in my pantry to use down the road when I needed them, not when I couldn't use all of it right then. So what I found were a bunch of tubs of fresh salsa that is kept in the refrigerated section in our produce department. And I grabbed six, eight of them, eight of them. I did not take them all, uh, but I grabbed eight of them to dry. We found a ton of fresh greens that were on clearance. This is a large, it's a one pound baby organic spinach that was $3, which is pretty a pretty great price. Um, so I grabbed four of these tubs. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna dehydrate this. And what we'll come up with is a jar of salsa that is already dried and lots and lots and lots of dried uh, greens that I can use in any meal down the road. If I wanna make spinach alfredo, if I wanna throw some spinach into any kind of stovetop meal I'm making, and including showing you how I can make green powder from it. So let's get started. Okay, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and start loading our trays. Um, I've already loaded one just to test to see how much I can get on per tray. And right now I can only do two of these cups at a time or two of these at a time. And these are holding about 14 ounces, uh, not quite a pound worth of salsa. So I do one on each. So if you're worried about the waste of the cups, you can turn around and use these like you would use a red solo cup to put your seedlings in when you're getting your garden started, which I think everybody is doing right now. Ours is already planted, ready to go. We're just waiting on stuff to start growing. So what I found, what I do, and these are actually different kinds of salsa. I didn't even notice that. Some are mild, some are medium. I don't think there was a hot one in here. Um, but so we're going to spread this out. You can just do this by moving your tray around um, or I'm just taking my offset spatula and moving things. So we've got a particularly chunky salsa here and then this one is more restaurant style on this side. But it really doesn't matter because it's all going to get used exactly the same way. Okay, now if you don't have this lip tray, this one is a brand called Bright Kitchen that does these lip trays for many uh, dehydrators for some of the round Nesco's, for any square ones. And it helps you put things that are more liquidy onto a tray without worrying about, worrying about spill off. But what you can also do is you can take some parchment paper or fruit leather sheets and you can uh, crimp the edges and connect them. I'm going to have a video up here right here where you can watch how I did a hack to make those work if you don't have a lip tray. But let's get these going. And the one thing I don't like about these silicone sheets is that our water uh, can dry on here and it makes it look like it's dirty all the time when it's really not. And it also collects dust and bits of food like a magnet. And I uh, end up, you know, can clean them and they never look clean. But they're still very utilitarian when you need them. All right, after washing, then this is what I do to help dry this stuff off before we put them on our trays. If you can see that but it will collect a lot of water in the bottom there that you could, don't have to worry about putting on your trays while you're doing this okay so here are some options for you you can run this through a food processor chop it up into smaller bits uh, to make powder you can put this into a blender with a little bit of water make it into like a slurry and put this in to do for powder but today we are not doing powder i just want small pieces in order to put into lasagna to put into any kind of casserole stovetop casserole things that i'm doing just as a means of getting a little bit of extra greens into my family's diet so i do not want to make powder however i can make powder easily with it just like this I don't have to go through the extra work of clean you know dirtying up another uh, dish if I don't want to it just makes it a little easier to get more onto a tray if you're trying to go straight to powder and get it done fast now here's another tip I'm going to give you about using a dehydrator that has very little clearance between the trays. Some machines have like a good amount of clearance, maybe even that much, but like for my Excaliburs, they actually only give a little bit of clearance per tray. And sometimes having these 
uh, leaves and the stems that stick up will cause problems when you're trying to push trays in and out and then you end up wanting to just take a tray out between everyone which is just means you're wasting your space so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pile this up a little more because this will shrink like crazy and I want to make good use of each of the trays here's the trick a second set of mesh or parchment paper or whatever you have if you're using cloth whatever because what you're gonna do is you're gonna smush this down and then you're gonna slide it right into your machine and I'm sorry I don't have the greatest lighting out here but this is what I do just smush them down put the tray right in and it goes in without having to take out a tray between it is so helpful Okay, we've got all of our trays loaded, and a tip I'm going to give you also about this method is when you do this, if you have the ability to use the plastic mesh sheets, invest in a second set. You're going to want them uh, if you need it for this kind, if you have an Excalibur or, an, uh, or other machine that has low clearance. It works way better than the silicone mesh, which I love the silicone mesh for almost everything, except this can get caught as you're pushing it through and then bunch up. So it really works better with this plastic mesh. So here we go. Let's get our stuff started. We're going to get our door put on just like that and we're going to start do it at about 115 we, do, we want to keep as many of the nutrients as possible with this the spinach but we don't want the sauce to take too long so I know not everybody has access to clearance foods in their grocery stores and you need to check with your local store to find out when they put things on clearance almost always I can go in the morning and I can find things on clearance at each of those departments that we're talking about in the meat department at our store, there's a separate little bin of just all the clearance meats, and they're not always the best deal. You kind of have to know your prices to find out if it's a good deal or not. A lot of times the meat produce there is the really high-end cuts of beef that have been clearance, and they're still out of our price range for our family. The other thing to do is also check, there may be like a section in your grocery store where they put a whole bunch of shelf-stable things on clearance, but they don't keep it with the, the where you would normally find it in the grocery store. Maybe it's a, a seasonal section where they have clearance things next to it. Sometimes you can find really good deals there as well. It just depends on what your local grocery store does and where you can find it. But the biggest thing that I can tell you is grab the stuff as you can, come home and take care of it right away. Now, shelf stable things, that date, like there's a, a Best Buy date on it, that date often doesn't matter. But it's the thing that grocery stores have to do to rotate that product. It doesn't mean that the product is bad. Oftentimes those Best Buy dates mean nothing. It's the peak, the peak time that it's good for. But even the USDA says, canned foods like that can be good for years past the date on the on the can that you store it but as long as the, the can's not bulging broken or obviously looks bad when you open it you're good now now things that come in a box that's a little different because those boxes aren't made for long-term storage so when you bring them home transfer them to something that is an airtight container and that will get you the longest time on the shelf but for your produce you can can it you can freeze it you can freeze dry it you can ferment it and you can dehydrate it. All right, here we go. This is our salsa that we've had uh, drying. These are our trays of spinach that we've had drying. Okay, so what we're going to do is let this cool down just a few minutes. You never want to test anything while it's still warm because it can still be pliable and stuff like that. However, what I do want to take advantage of is this salsa still being warm coming off a tray. It will make it much easier to try to take off this silicone. Um, this is the one thing I don't like about these silicone trays is they can be really sticky for, for some things and um, cause a problem. So if you have trouble getting stuff off, well, you can do it either really warm straight out of the dehydrator, pull out and start taking stuff off right then. Or if you're still having trouble, you can throw this into the freezer if you have that kind of space in your freezer and then freeze it. And sometimes getting it really good and cold helps shrink it up some and so it comes off the silicone a little better. So what I'm going to do is just roll this a little bit, start breaking up this salsa because I don't want to keep it in large pieces and it will help make taking it off a little easier. Sometimes it also helps to bring out a, a spatula of some sort with a sharp edge to it. Not a knife because you don't want to cut into that uh, silicone, but this can help get up under and get stuff off.
there we have all of that picante sauce now in a jar. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so now we're gonna take our chips and we're gonna make salsa again. So what I've done is I've added a handful into a bowl and I've added water to it and I'm gonna let it sit here and rehydrate. Now you can use hot water to make this happen faster. I just put cold water in it because it's gonna sit here and rehydrate while I finish. Uh, but you can already see I just did this and it's starting to change color already as it's absorbing and transferring all of the uh, flavors back and forth with the water but that's how you do it. Now, if you find that you have too much water by the time it's rehydrated for a while and it's still really soupy, you can add more salsa. If you find it's too thick, you can add more water. Of course, we're gonna go ahead and get our jar closed. This is all cooled off, ready to go. This is conditioning where you take your jar and you shake it once a day, flip it over, if you'd like, the next day, shake it, flip it back over. And what you're looking for is any signs of clumping, where this stuff is starting to stick together or it's sticking to the edge of your jar. If that's happening and just lightly shaking isn't getting it off, you need to put it back in the dehydrator and dry it some more because it's got moisture in it and you need to make sure that's out so that this doesn't mold while in storage. Once your week is up, mark your jar. If you haven't done it already, you can choose to vacuum seal just like this or not, that's up to you. This will keep about a year or so in your pantry. You may get longer, but we found that it just doesn't last all that long uh, for some reason because it's a tomato-based product and that doesn't last as long as other foods. So I usually make sure that we rotate through this within a year. So one of the tips I have for you is you're starting to stuff your spinach into your jar. Uh, if you want to keep the leaves, because to me I find the leaves as beneficial as having powder, is that I will take a damper, or you can have, you know, if you have anything like this, and just go through here and start pushing the leaves down. You're not really breaking them up a lot. You're breaking them some, but not a lot, but you're pushing it down because these leaves use up a lot of space and take up extra air uh, that they don't need. So you can push it down and get a little more in there. So this, what it's three quarters of a half gallon jar is six trays of an Excalibur size dehydrator. So that's a lot of spinach in a jar. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and the same thing with this spinach as with anything else that you put in your pantry. If you want to go ahead and vacuum seal this, you are free to do so after you've conditioned to make sure it is dry and really good to use. But I know this has been drying for a day longer than it needed to uh, as I was trying to catch up with everything and so it is good to go. Okay, so your choice for storing this is gonna be in anything that's airtight. You don't have to always use a canning jar. Stop. Uh, you don't always have to use a canning jar. You can use an airtight container. Just make sure it's really airtight. Now what I usually do is I keep this in my pantry that's easy access that I can take out, take a handful to add to a dish that I want to add some extra greens to, and then I've got that good to go. And then I keep this in storage ready to refill this when it's necessary. If you like, you can also make green powder, which is just every green that I ever dry, I blend together either in my Nutri Ninja Bullet Blender like this or in my big blender and just grind it up into a powder. And I add a tablespoon or so into most meals that we do. A tablespoon is about a cup of fresh. So it's not like I'm trying to replace all of our vegetables within one dish this way, but it's the continual use in every dish that we do, the added nutrients. But you can see, you can either store it whole like this or you can store it in powder form and use it both ways. Okay, so I kind of lied. When I looked to see how much of the uh, greens I had left, I don't have enough to fill up another half gallon jar, and that's the space that I have for it to go into. So I'm going ahead and starting to load my Ninja Blender um, cup with more greens. And what I'm doing is I put greens in there and then I shut them down and break them up so they take a little less room so I can get all the trays on there. On, just bring it on. I'm gonna get grinding.
there is your fine green powder. You can see that one leaf, uh, the stem didn't get ground in there and that's fine. Sometimes what I do is I shake it a little bit while it's growing. You need to make sure everything gets pushed down to the blades, but I don't care so much about that. I can pull it out right now. And then I'm gonna add that to the rest of my powder, just like this. And I'll grind the rest. And then there is your powder. You can see the difference in color. This has got more kale and uh, collard greens in here. And this is just pure spinach. And then all I have to do is just shake it up. You can mix this. What I try not to do is mix anything that's older than about six months because then it's starting to lose its nutrition. There's no point in doing it. Uh, try to either use it up or compost it. But there is our green powder. And you can add anywhere from a teaspoon up to a couple tablespoons, depending on the size of the dish that you're putting things in, you're putting it into. Start experimenting with it with small bits first and then just work your way up. But this adds a little bit of extra nutrition into every dish that you do all throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month. It's not meant to replace your vegetables, but it's a great way to add extra nutrition in everything you do. Now let's check out our salsa. Okay, after it's been sitting here for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, I am just going through here and mixing it all up. And as we have now, we have salsa. Now, I am, I remember I blended the restaurant style salsa with chunky salsa, so um, it's not exactly the same as it was when it went in, but it tastes exactly like it was before. Yes, it's lost its punch of bright fresh because it is, you know, it's been dried and rehydrated, but this still serves as a perfect salsa to anything that you want to make. I mean, dip a chip, you're going to love it. You can also use this to cook with. You can use this any way that you would have used salsa in the first place, but get a close up look at it. See, it's so yummy and it smells great and it tastes awesome. Now I'm gonna share one of my other tips that I do for fast stock up of my pantry is using frozen foods. And you can watch that video how I do it right here because it's prepped and ready to go and you have to do nothing but open a package and dry it and stock it. It is such a great time saving and money saving way to stock your pantry. So until I see you again next time, remember, nevertheless, she preserved. And I'll see you next time.